Hey, Mr. Z, you ready hey, to talk Ms. about Watt. groundwater? Oh, I am. I'm definitely ready to get started with groundwater. So we're going to dig into the basics and throw a lot of vocabulary at them today that I think is going to be new vocabulary for a lot of them. It is, and groundwater is one of those units that actually has a ton of vocabulary in it, so uh, there's going to be a lot of stuff to kind of keep track of. So make sure you're taking good notes as we go through this segment. Luckily, lots of it's very visual, so let's start out with the learning targets. So the first learning target here is draw and label a diagram showing, and there are a lot of words on there, we're going to go through each one of those terms and show you where they are in a just a general water table underground water system mm -hmm. diagram. And then the uh, next learning target is just explaining the relationship with the shape of the land and then where the water table is, which we will define in the first learning target. Mm -hmm. So you'll know exactly what that is. Third, we're going to look at what happens during periods of drought or periods of heavy rainfall mm -hmm. in terms of the level of the water table. Okay, yeah. so let's go ahead and jump in. One right. big rumor that we need to dispel right now. Yeah, yes it is. Um, uh, this rumor is, is that, or this misconception that there's just this void space underneath the earth and that's where water is and we just kind of stick almost like a straw down there and just get it out when we need it. Um, but water doesn't exist that way uh, underground. There's very little of it that looks like the picture that we have here with the diver swimming through it. So that's not the way it is. Get that out yeah. of your minds. This is the last time you're going to see this one. So let's go on to the next slide. All right, so uh, here uh, we have a new vocabulary word, and we'll maybe to explain this diagram in a little bit more depth before we actually define that word. Uh, so we have a, a profile of the Earth itself, and we can see that there is a part of the Earth kind of on the bottom there that has water in it. And then there's a part above it that doesn't have any water in it. So uh, tying the first slide with this slide is that that's how water exists underground. It's actually in between some of the sediment and sand grains or right. sediment grains. So these are diagrams that are drawn relatively close to the surface. Mm -hmm. And this particular diagram shows two zones, the unsaturated zone and the zone of saturation. So okay. thinking back to Chem 1, uh -huh. and remembering what unsaturated and saturated means in terms of a solution. We sure. knew that unsaturated was something you could add more to, mm -hmm. but saturated was holding all it could hold. Yeah. And similar use of the terms here in groundwater. So the unsaturated zone, which this slide is all about, is the underneath the ground part that is above the water table uh -huh. where you could still add more water and it would still be held by that sediment or material that's there, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. yeah, exactly. And we'll define water table, I think, in the next slide. We will. All, All right. right. So let's go on to we'll the next go. slide. All right, so now we're defining three more terms here, and we had mentioned water table, and now we have the um, the capillary uh, fringe as well. The water table is going to be that line, right, that separates the unsaturated zone from the saturated zone. Okay. So the actual top of the saturated zone where, where the water level is. So the difference between those two zones, you can see in the picture here, mm -hmm. that in the saturated zone, all the spaces are filled with blue here, which with indicates water. water. But in the unsaturated zone, there are spaces in between whatever the grains are, sediment grains or that particles, could be filled. that could be filled, but mm -hmm. they aren't right now. Mm -hmm. Maybe they have air in them, some water, but they're not filled yeah. with water. Yeah, and the water table itself is not something that's definite, it actually moves. All right, and we'll get into more of that later on. The capillary fringe. Um, the capillary fringe is um, the uh, the experiment that I associated with is that roll of paper towels. Mm -hmm. And if I were to stick a, uh, like a shallow pan with water, and I put this roll of paper towels in that shallow pan of water, you would actually have water kind of moving up the paper towel. And that's uh, another chemistry property of water because it's it's polarized. So those water molecules are attracted to each other. And inside those smaller spaces, you get kind of like an area right at the water table that is kind of, um, oh, I'm trying to think well, how I could put it. some spaces that are actually saturated, Yeah. but not all the way across on the whole line of the water Okay, table, yeah, right? that's a good way to put it. Across. Of course. All right, good. All right. So let's move on to the next slide. All right, now we dive into a little bit more vocabulary. So let's look first and see if we can find the terms that we already know in this okay. diagram. Let's look yeah. for the unsaturated and the saturated zone and the water table and try to identify those locations. So. For those of you taking notes, you want to make sure on this particular diagram that you can find, here's the water table, it's labeled pretty clearly for you, mm -hmm. but what is the unsaturated zone then? 
it's the zone above that. And in this diagram, it's actually called the zone of aeration. Yeah, but the terms mean the same thing. All right, so the unsaturated zone or the zone of aeration are the same thing. All right. And then below that, you've got the groundwater. So water table, zone of aeration or unsaturated mm -hmm. zone, water table, saturated zone below it. Yeah, okay. so... Yeah, I mean, we also have the bedrock there, which doesn't also, it doesn't hold water. So that's why it's kind of gray, where you see the blue is where it's actually filled with water. Okay. So let's look at a couple other things here. We've got, as you just said, the bedrock, mm -hmm. but that's actually, in this case, it's confining that aquifer. So here's another term we have to talk about. Yeah. The aquifer itself mm -hmm. is the saturated zone mm -hmm. beneath the water table. Yeah. And in this case, it's confined on the bottom by mm -hmm. the bedrock layer because the bedrock layer is not allowing water to penetrate it. Mm -hmm. yep. So we have this aquifer layer here that's trapped between the bedrock underneath it and another layer on top of it. Yeah. So this layer that's kind of in the middle also can't hold water either. So we confine the aquifer to that space. All right. So we call that a confined aquifer. So do we have an unconfined aquifer in this picture? We do, and that is going to be above this kind of second layer right here where the word water table is. So from here all the way to the surface, it has the potential to hold water, but the water or the saturated zone is only in that one space that's highlighted in blue. The space above that is the zone of aeration where it can hold water, it's just not holding water right now. So in this case, the unconfined aquifer is unconfined because water is able to penetrate from the surface and soak down through the unsaturated zone into that aquifer, that exactly. unconfined aquifer. But the water doesn't soak further than the unconfined aquifer because there is a layer here that stops Stopping it. Stopping it, exactly. And then there's a confined aquifer below that where the water is trapped between those two layers mm -hmm. that water can't pass through. Yep. Okay, good. Yeah. And then we've got water flowing actually out of this unconfined aquifer over here into the lake, and that's the discharge area. So water sure. going out of an aquifer is discharge. And if you notice, the water table height is the same as the lake level as well. And usually you'd find that, especially near a body of water, even a river, where that table would be, like right at that junction where the water, lake water, river water, meets the ground, that those would be kind of the same. A lot of these things are things you're going to get to test in lab, so that is one thing you'll test yeah. in lab. I think we have one more term here that we want to talk about, and that is the recharge area. So we've got this label here, recharge yeah. area, and this is really important for the confined aquifer it because is. there has to be a place for water to enter that confined mm -hmm. aquifer, and here it is at the surface where the aquifer actually meets the surface. Yeah, exactly. So it's in a lake and water can flow down from that lake into that confined yeah. aquifer. And that's the only place on this diagram where water can get in there. All right, so make sure we understand that, that even if it rains maybe just to the left of the lake, that's not going to get into that confined aquifer. It's only going to go into the unconfined aquifer. All right, so a lot of vocabulary in that slide. Yeah, We're going to yeah. spend some time in class and especially in the lab of reinforcing course. that vocabulary when they're Definitely. working with the groundwater model. Oh, yeah. Good. Okay, so if you need to take a second here to pause on this one and go back and think about those terms, please do. Otherwise, we're going to go on. Okay, great. great. All right, so we talked a little bit about recharging yeah. the aquifers mm -hmm. and thinking about what happens when there's a lot of rain or what happens like last summer when there's almost no rain. Yeah, exactly. Does the water table stay the same or does it change in levels? The oh, it definitely, it, it, uh, it, it fluctuates and that, and that fluctuation can be seasonal. So in times of spring where there is a lot of rainfall and snow melt, you would see um, more recharging of the, of the aquifer and the water table will rise. In the summertime when there's a lot of heat and a lot of evaporation, going back from the first video, uh, we can have a lot of water escaping and then uh, the water table is lower. So that idea has some implications if you're going to have to drill a well for your water supply, right? Because you want to make sure that you drill your well deep enough that during a drought, yeah. you're still going to tap into a source yeah. of good water. And to account for just the seasonal fluctuations of the water table as well. Okay, good. Let's go on to the next slide. Well, we've got a special kind <laughs> of aquifer. We had confined and unconfined, and now we have one called a perched aquifer. It's similar to a confined aquifer, but it's different because it's sitting up higher. Yeah. Elevation than the other aquifer. Yeah, so uh, if we take a look at that diagram on the bottom right, we have something called an aquaclude, 
right? So this is another one of those uh, like types of rocks that, that can't hold water either, right? And then also water can't flow through it. So in this particular situation, if you, if you notice right here, the water, right, or the aquifer can actually sit on top of this, uh, this other layer that water can't get through. So it's kind of perched above uh, maybe another aquifer down below. And when that perched aquifer, perched water table, intersects with the surface, like on the mm -hmm. side of a hill, and water actually flows out of it, that's yeah. where you get a, a spring. spring. Okay, exactly. great. Great. Nice. All right. So I think we're ready to do yeah. a little mastery check here. Definitely. Maybe a diagram that's going to have some things for students to label, match some terms. Yeah. So uh, jump out to your class website, take your quiz, and uh, check out your notes as you're doing that. And we'll see All you right. in class tomorrow. All right, sounds good. Take care.